before before uh, getting this full time gig, I went to graduate school here. Oh, turn on my mic, right? That'd be a good idea. Um, I went to graduate school here and got a PhD in history, and so I've taught a number of history classes. And this past summer, I was uh, a co-instructor. I convinced three of my fellow, some were graduate students, some had graduated, to, uh, to do a course together because I said, look, this is going to be really good for your professional development to learn how to teach an online course before you go out on the job market. Uh, so I kind of helped lead them through, hey, this is, <laughs> this is how you create and teach an online course. And it was also something I wanted to do because since getting in my role in academic technology, there's all of these things that I'd learned about that I did not know when I was a graduate student in teaching. And I was like, hey, I really want to try some of these things. Uh, and I hadn't had that opportunity. So this summer, we taught it was a four week uh, all online course. I'd actually taught this course online before as a TA three times. Um, and what we'd have initially done, it was a, a US foreign relations course, and what we'd initially done back when I was a TA is we just took, it was my advisor was the, the instructor of record, and we literally just recorded his lectures in a live setting, and then we kind of chopped them up, edited them, uh, got some transcripts and threw those up online, and it worked okay, but I was not satisfied with that format. Uh, I, when you're converting to online, you don't want to uh, try and replicate what you do in face-to-face -face classroom, you want to try and do something else, something new. Uh, and so I really didn't, particularly since we weren't teaching the class live before teaching it online, I didn't want to just sit there in front of a camera <laughs> and lecture uh, at a camera in an empty room. That's just not, yeah, not good, uh, good anything on a number of levels. So, uh, what, I, what we needed to do was come up with some lecture replacement materials, basically. Uh, and I knew a little bit about press books. Um, we also uh, knew about CSCR. Uh, and then Canvas itself does have some, you know, called pages, which are just HTML pages that you can put together. Um, and then one of my colleagues had taught the class before and had done lecture capture. So we ended up actually using four separate authoring tools, or different authoring tools to, to make these lecture replacements. Um, and so for me personally, I wanted to kind of explore a couple of the different tools. So I built um, my, my very first module in CSCR, because uh, I was familiar with that. Uh, and then I decided I wanted to give Pressbooks a go. So I actually did, as you'll see here, build my very first modules in CSCR. Um, and you know, it, it worked fine. I, I appreciated it. I appreciate a lot of what CSCR can do uh, on that front. Um, you know, you can go through, et cetera, et cetera. But it takes a long time. <laughs> and that was my, kind of my biggest frustration is it took a long time. Now, what I appreciate about CSCR is that there are lots of interactive elements to it. So like I could put in quiz questions uh, and things like that. Um, embedding media isn't a huge pain, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, but for me, the, the biggest thing about CSCR is it, it looks kind of like a website from about 10 years ago, uh, which is fine. Um, it's just not the, the most um, aesthetically pleasing platform. And like I said, it takes a while to get up to speed on how it works. Uh, it's kind of clunky bringing stuff together. Uh, so I decided, hey, I want to give Pressbooks a try, particularly since I had uh, heard about Pressbooks and how you can very easily slip them into Canvas. So that's what I did. Uh, I, I used Pressbooks and I was very happy with it. And Obviously, you all get to play around with it some more uh, a little bit later, but I was very happy with it because um, it turned out to be much easier of an authoring interface, at least for me, than CSCR. It was a lot more intuitive. Uh, it was a lot easier for me to bring in audio and video. Uh, and then, um, not that I spent any time whatsoever formatting and making it look nice, which you'll see in a minute, um, it still overall looked better. <laughs> Uh, and then the, the other thing that I really appreciated about it is that uh, students could both access it, uh, it was its accessibility, which is another potential issue with CSCR. 
students could access it in the course. They could open the book outside of the course. It had some mobile um, responsive design uh, to it, those kind of things. So I, I really appreciated that. And then um, I kind of had to play around with it a little bit. One thing that I learned uh, is that um, it will, when you import into Canvas, you'll, you'll notice there's these um, parts. And then there's the kind of uh, sections or pages within those parts. So each of those imports as a module. So every time you add a new part, it comes into Canvas as a separate module. So initially my problem was that I had one lecture replacement where I had multiple parts. And then I quickly realized that wasn't going to work <laughs> because I didn't want to have three, one module spread across basically three pages. But the nice thing is with Canvas, there's an easy way around this. So this is all one module, but you'll notice in Canvas it looks a little different. I'm able to kind of sub-indent. That's one of the things that's nice about Canvas is that you can indent in the module so you can at least visually uh, show students. These are all together, but these parts fit under this larger heading. So, and then as you'll see, it, it actually looks fairly nice within Canvas itself. It's got a nice clean look. Um, I didn't, never quite figured out why, for whatever reason, that very first page didn't have any way to navigate forward. Um, students seem to get over that okay. Um, but it's got a nice clean look. If you click here on Home and do Open a New Tab, it will open it outside of the learning management system, which is something I appreciated. There's also, I like, there's a lot of these things um, that are very easy formatting. So I would never even attempt to do this in HTML or CSS or whatever. But in Pressbooks, it was literally like highlight the text and then click Format Learning Objectives. And then it made this nice little neat box that makes it seem like I know what I'm doing when it comes to coding. <laughs> and then it's very easy to import um, images, uh, audio, uh, and uh, video. And it's just, you know, it's just a nice, simple navigation. Um, you see here's what the audio looks like. My only complaint, really, about um, the audio, video, or multimedia aspect is uh, any audio file that was over 10 minutes, I had to uh, first upload into Kaltura or a uh, media hosting site and then embed it in Pressbooks because the file was just too big for Pressbooks to handle. But it was actually kind of a nice thing because uh, it helped me try to be, uh, break up my, uh, break up my um, audio more. So it wasn't, I didn't have any chunks or very few chunks that went longer than 10 minutes, which is uh, a good thing when you're, well, teaching online or <laughs> otherwise. So you see, it, 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 I really did not format these at all. <laughs> you can make this look a lot nicer with very little effort. Uh, but even if you put no effort into it, it really looks pretty nice. And it looks pretty bookish um, within that. And then the, the other thing that I really appreciated when you embed an image, there's a little captioning thing where you can quickly write your own captions uh, that makes it, again, look somewhat professionally done even though I would never attempt to do that in CSS kind of thing. So, uh, and then it was also easy to embed links and whatnot within it. Um, so the, the, what, the other drawback, and I think today we're going to talk about how this is potentially being changed and fixed, uh, is that uh, when I would first built in Pressbooks over the summer, uh, it didn't have, there was no ability to really put in interactive elements outside of audio, visual, uh, and links. Um, like, because in CSCR, you can do quizzes, uh, self-reflect student questions, those kind of things. Uh, which, uh, in my CSCR module, those did not talk to my gradebook at all. They were entirely an attempt to get students to do some self-reflecting on the lesson. But I think there's some value in that even if it's not graded. Uh, so this summer, I was unable to do any of that in Pressbooks. But now there's H5P, 
which will allow some of that. So I'm excited actually to explore some of that myself <laughs> with you today. So another thing that I will say is, like I said, we ended up using four different um, authoring tools. This one is the one after I built my very first one in CSCR, I built my next one in Pressbooks, and then I was like, all right, I'm just sticking with Pressbooks from here on out. Uh, and I did. Um, my uh, compatriots, a couple of them, one of them did all of his in CSCR, though he had some major, major problems. Um, he's invested a lot of time because there were some bugs. Uh, the other one did a couple CSCR, did a couple of lecture captures, and then the last one just did the HTML pages uh, in Canvas, and he was quite happy with those uh, and how those worked out. But at the end of the semester, we actually did a survey uh, where we asked the students, you know, which, which of these did you rank them in order of one to four? Now, the only problem with the survey was we got some skewed results because the final uh, was due over the weekend, and we had three specific modules that they had to include in their final, and two of them were in uh, Pressbooks, and Pressbooks went down that weekend on the server. <laughs> so, and you see this reflected in, in the survey results. Uh, in the survey results, you had uh, the, the two most popular, um, the, one, the ones that were rated number one the most were the lecture capture, which, and the number of students commented it just felt more like a classroom. Um, my thought was, are you sure you're really learning as well? <laughs> but, uh, and then uh, Pressbooks was, was tied at number one. But then you look at the rest of the survey and they're all kind of evenly spread between two, three, and four, but like nobody really picked Pressbooks as their second or third and a whole bunch of people picked it as fourth. Uh, and I think a lot of that was, was because of the fact that it went down when they were trying to write their final and they were very frustrated uh, with it. So. Uh, all in all, I was very happy with it. If I, if I teach uh, again, whether online or hybrid or even face-to-face, -face, I would use Pressbooks, especially since there's now these more interactive elements that we can do. So uh, with that, I will shut up and we can get to, to practicing. Unless there's, sorry, questions. So, just one quick question. So you showed us the modules, right? Um, I'm just curious about the discussion um, section. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we actually, we had a class-wide discussion, uh, but then we also had groups, and so we also had each individual group had discussion <laughs> boards going on too. Um, and the discussion tool was fine. Um, I wouldn't say I was wild with it, but I got the job done. Not much different from D2L. D2L, well, it's actually not quite as robust as D2L. Okay. Um, but it works. It works. 